Okay guys, here we go. We're back again in our very first video on the actual build uh, for this uh, water bottle top. And um, in our last video, we just did a little intro, a little overview of the CAD that I did in the past to uh, prepare for this. So um, one thing I'm going to do really quick, um, just before we move into a brand new file, and you don't have this luxury, but I'm going to do this just for myself, is I'm going to go print screen and just take a little screenshot of this and just throw it into Photoshop. And I'm going to make a new file, and then I'm just going to paste that down just so that I have just a little reminder of uh, the details that are in this file here, um, specifically my dimensions, okay? I do have my notepad next to me where, I, where I've got my dimensions uh, laid out already, um, but I, um, I just want to make sure that I've got <clears throat> a good... Uh, couple of different resources to kind of turn to so we'll take a side view here also and print screen and uh, we'll just go ahead and paste a couple of these guys in there okay so that's sitting in Photoshop in case I need it next thing we're gonna do is just go to new and this is where you can start to join in if you want um, I don't have to save any changes so I'm just gonna make a small objects millimeters file here and um, we're going to start making this cap. Okay, so the reason we're making the cap first and not doing like a revolve for the entire water bottle is because um, we want to just be focused, right? This cap is, uh, it's, it's going to take some work. So we want to make sure that we're uh, focused on that. And then also, I'm hoping that later in uh, the build here, we're going to be able to um, transfer over to SolidWorks to add some more um, detail as far as engineering details on these things um, and that um, <clears throat> interface between the cap and the main bottle um, will really start to count once we get over into SolidWorks so okay so now on my notes I have measured this thing with my digital calipers and the measurement I took is 38.2 high so the very first thing that I want to do is I want to put a line in here that's 38.2 millimeters high and we've done this a lot of times before, so we're going to use a polyline. That's our straight line. And we'll look up at the command line here for instructions on how to do this. It wants the start of the polyline, so we'll just hit the zero, and we'll hit OK. And then we're going to type in the dimension that we want, which is 38.2. <clears throat> and just hit OK again, or hit Enter. And then you can see that little point right there where the line changes from black into white that's 38.2 you hold down the shift button to make sure it's straight and just click once to drop that point there and then your cursor will be stuck to that polyline and you can right click to drop it and this is going to be um, just a, a thing to measure off of okay so this is the very tip of it and um, this is the ground plane down here okay so we want to make sure that we have a layer set where we can put stuff like this construction line work so um, why don't we just right out of the gate here let's just start organizing our layer structure we have the default layer where we're gonna do most of our work okay and then we're gonna have a layer for curves okay and then we're gonna have a layer for surfaces and then we're gonna have a layer for construction line work okay <clears throat> and then we'll just have a couple of extra layers hanging out just in case we need them, okay? So uh, let's give the layers some nice colors. I like my curves to be this kind of like aquamarine thing. They, they really sing in that scheme. And then surfaces um, always seem to look nice with a nice purple or a pink. That's pink, <laughs> seriously. Okay. And... Uh, then construction line work, I go with like a green. You could pick whatever colors you want. I mean, this is just lately I've been kind of feeling this scheme. So um, this needs a color, probably something. I thought not salmon, but we'll go with that. And yeah, white could work. We'll just go light gray. All right. Okay. Good. 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 Now double click on if if this happens to you and you accidentally. Um, click on one of the layers more than once it'll reset that layer to be the layer you're drawing on you can see the little black checkbox so just go back to default and double click on that to make that your working layer okay 
All right, so first thing we'll do is we'll just take this construction line, we'll right click on the construction layer, and we'll put it there where it belongs. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Now what we can do is get into the um, uh, build on this thing here. Okay, and so this is where uh, Photoshop's really going to come into play, and this is kind of like where I, uh, this is kind of like what I thought was going to happen um, is that <coughs> the very top of this thing, uh, the, the bit where the water would come out is um, one of the measurements that I was a little foggy on. So take a quickie look here. It's about 12. Okay. It's about 11 and a half to 12. So why don't we just do that? We'll go back over to Rhino here. And the very first thing we're going to do is we'll probably um, <clears throat> just uh, go to the top view and we'll set down a circle center of the circle will be at zero and make sure that the diameter of uh, the circle is what's defined if it happens to say radius up here just click on diameter to set that and then just type in um, let's just go with like a 12 okay there we go all right now at this point what we can do is we can uh, drag this thing up until it snaps onto the top of our guide curve okay so we want to have object snap on and we want to have endpoint chosen like that. Okay, and then just grab your circle, grab it by the little point in the center until it snaps right up onto the top and make sure to watch your other um, views here to kind of make sure that that's okay. All right, now there you go. So the next one we're gonna do is gonna be a circle that's gonna be about 21.8. So set the center of the circle at zero Okay, and then just type in the 21.8, okay, <clears throat> and this one is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood uh, about two millimeters, I think, below, or about two and a half millimeters below that circle. So we'll just use the gumball again here to just drag it up, and you might need to zoom in a little bit here on the front view to see it, and don't forget to take advantage of the... Uh, you know manipulation or the navigation tools in Rhino so it's it's control with the right mouse button to zoom in and out and then it's shift to move around like this so I've always got my hand kind of hovering right over going control and zoom and da -da 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 like that keeping that nice and straight and make moving around really freely so there you go and yeah we're gonna uh, do that so a little more than two, you know, something like about like that. Very good. And then we'll just do one more circle that's going to also be at zero. And um, notice what I did there. I just hover my mouse over the top view, and Rhino will recognize, okay, you want to draw there. So um, then I can just set a zero and um, type in the next dimension, which is um, just about 17. I have 17.18. You can go with um whatever you want why don't we call it 17.2 and that guy is going to be um, also just about two millimeters below so dun, 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 dun. there's about a half and there's one and so it's about like that I'm actually going to choke up on that a little bit because I'm just looking at the actual model here and I'm thinking yeah yeah it's a little bit better like that okay cool uh, next thing we'll just uh, we're gonna do another one and um, it's gonna be just about the same size so we can just do a control and a paste and uh, we'll just go down a little bit um, we'll probably go over to Photoshop and just take a look how much down what did I do before in my model if we go to the side view here you can see here there's about one, two, three, four, five, about five down. So we'll go over to Rhino and we'll just pull this thing five down. So there's three and there's about four and five, something like that. And then I just want to make this circle a little bit bigger. So we're going to do that with the gumball. Okay, I'm going to just go here to my red box, this red box on the gumball. Hold down shift so that we can do a uniform scale. And we're just going to pull that out just a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, this is just a concept so we don't have to be too crazy about it. So there's that. Okay, very good. 
Next thing we're going to do here, we'll get another circle. They just keep coming, you know. All right. Um, this one's going to be uh, 24.36. So set to zero point and type in 24.36. And uh, go down here and pull this thing up. So there's the gap in between the previous one. And this one, it's it's a really slight gap, and I mean it's probably only like two millimeters or so. I think actually this is looking pretty good right there. Look at if I go back to my Photoshop file and we just look at that, um, the gap between the two. It plays out to being like about three between the two, but for you know for for this rebuild here, I'm thinking we'll make it more like a two. There we go, perfect. Okay, and so. Um, this is called, you know, we're, we're manually building the wireframe for this right now. So um, this is uh, called building a skeleton or anything like that. We're going to keep it going here. We've got a 25.7 millimeter circle to draw next. So we'll just hit the zero and um, hit OK and then type in 25.7. Uh, round up if you want to. And uh, this one here. There we go. This one here, just checking, needs to be uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of five millimeters down from here. So there's one, two, three, four, and six. Yeah, so about like that. That's about right. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. And what's going to happen if you're sitting there and you're going, ah, oh, you know, this is really annoying trying to set these all up in the right area. These are, like I said in the previous video, these are going to be the backbone of our build. So we're going to set some surfaces up to these guide curves here, these construction curves, and we'll be able to build and rebuild um, surfaces off of these as needed. So um, if some of these are not in the right position and need to be tweaked a little bit, we can always go back and do that. We'll just um, make sure to not lose these. So that's that. Okay. Everything's moving right along now. We're going to get down onto uh, the main kind of uh, diameter. So um, what I want to do is make a circle that's somewhere about, I'm going to call it like 63 millimeters, okay? I'm just kind of guessing there because I'm looking at my notes and I've got a chamfered edge in uh, my notes and I ended up with the build, this chamfered edge here. See, I took measurements off the top chamfer and bottom chamfer. And um, yeah, C63 is what I had decided on finally. So even without even looking at this, I eyeballed it again. 63 millimeters is the right number. And then we'll add this chamfer using um, the chamfer tool. So we have that in our quiver. So uh, grab a circle, type a zero. Hit enter, type 63. There you go. All right. Now we're going to just pull this thing up till we get to the um, right area. There's a gap in between the previous and the, the one there. Let's take a look at what size it is. Go to our side view. And so we're going from here down to there. You know, you got two, you got three, four, it's about five. Okay, so over to Rhino, and let's just take a look here. We got about one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, something like that. Close enough. Okay, feeling good. Next up is going to be the final curve in the lineup, and that one is, uh, that's a big old 68.7 millimeters. So same technique as before. Circle tool, hit a zero. 68.7 all right and that went wrong look at that so somehow that thing got put in uh, vertical like that so we'll just use the gumball I'm just going to click on it like this I'm going to click on one of the rotation bars for the gumball I'm going to type a 90 okay and there you go and then I just want to go here to my side view to make sure that's sitting pretty right there okay okay now I want to just double check this because I've got quite a few millimeters between here and here. So let's just let's just look at that really quick. This is 10, okay? Because every one of these big blocks is 10, and then I got four up here, so I got that's 14. So compare that to our last build. 
we got 10 okay and we got uh, one two three four. so it's even it's a little smaller than our previous one yeah there we go I think that should be fine yeah okay okay this one might come up a little bit cool all right now I just noticed here as I'm kind of going around look at my cursor my cursor is set as a um, little target there um, then I casually just glanced up at the uh, uh, property or the you know command line here and I realized I'm in my circle tool so I just want to hit escape to drop a tool that's what you do to drop a tool okay okay so these are going to be um, some actual curves here these are not construction line work these are going to be the thing that we're going to um, be moving around and, and, and using quite a bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save all of these by selecting them like this and I'm going to put them on my curves layer it looks like I grabbed my construction line by accident I'll put that back where it belongs okay and there you go that's going to be that for that okay good now what I want to do is I'm going to start connecting these in the side view so I'm going to actually expand my front view here and I'm going to use a polyline for this I'm going to go one two three four and that's it I'm just going to do one section like that okay and we'll get into why in a minute but for now let's just do a revolve on that so I'm not going to use my um, pop-up menu because that's my thing I want you guys to learn where the tools are at so um, we're gonna go to standard tab click here and then get your revolve tools right there alternatively if you can't figure that out just type in revolve up at the top revolve asks you to for the curve you want to revolve and select it and then just hit enter and then for me I like to have grid snap on and you just snap right onto the grid and just draw a straight line right on the z-axis there and then um, pull your mouse over to the right so you see it start to rotate and either go up here and hit full circle or take notice of the fact that within the word full circle there's the U that's underlined and if you just type a U it will grab that and use that command so usually what I'll do is I'll just pull my revolve over to the right and I'll hit the U button and then I'll hit enter and that will do a full circle revolve and take a look at that is our first surface okay so everything's moving right along perfect let's set this to rendered mode or we'll set it to shaded mode and that way we can watch the shaded mode sort of take place as we edit stuff here so okay now this curve here is actually just a it's a construction line I guess so we could save it on the construction thing this just tells us where the part line is for the split where the line or where the the cap pops up so uh, we don't need to connect anything to that um, so what we can do right now is we can just connect these two curves here and make sure you have object snap on and endpoint on all right and just a nice straight line there and then we're going to revolve it grab our revolve tool again draw a straight line type the u okay get a nice circle there perfect perfect okay uh, now we've got a couple of um, actual control point curves that we want to draw and that's to get the softer edges of this thing figured out okay so the first one is gonna happen up here <clears throat> and here's the way this one's gonna go so we're gonna go ahead and turn on the control point curve with our object snap we'll snap to the end point of that and we're just gonna go click one two three and then we want to make sure to have grid snap turned on here so we can snap on the grid a few times before we hit the center part okay so um, I would probably turn off ob object snap so that we can go one two three okay 
I'm just drawing a nice clean rounded edge here that's going to flatten out on top okay and if you want to turn those points on again at any point you're going to just um, go over here to this button here and hit points on and then you can grab these points and move them around as needed if you feel like it okay So what I'm doing right there is um, I originally lined them up on the grid so that I knew that I had one, two, and three points lined up. So that when I did a revolve, I'd get a flat top. And then I just adjust the CVs a little bit afterwards um, using the gumball so that it's nice and good there. So I'm going to turn off the points with an alternative right click on this button. And then I'm going to do a revolve on that curve um, just like this. Okay, grid snap. There we go. Cool. That looks good. Pretty good. All right. Now, next up, I'm going to go ahead and use another CV curve uh, to connect these two right here. And this is one that you're going to have to eyeball. Um, follow along if you can. I'm going to just start off the curve. And I'm going to snap right to the end point of this. And you can see right away that I'm not snapping to anything. So I've got to turn on my O snaps right there. And I'm going to go one, and pay attention to kind of how I'm uh, drawing this curve. So um, the first point snaps to the object. The second point's a little bit further away. Then I get into this point where I'm going to try to draw a ramp that's going to ramp up. This is, a, this is going to be a radius edge. And so I'm going to put three points on that. So anytime you got to do a curve, try to do you know a few points during a curve, but keep your points minimal as you arc up this way. So and then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go probably one click more and then snap onto the object. There we go. OK. This is definitely going to be one where you're going to want to edit those edit points a little bit. So let's turn those edit points on again and fuss around with these for a little minute. Remember that um, that this line here is just a um, it's just a guide curve to show us where the part line is for the top. So I want to see what happens if I take out this CV. Yeah, that's not horrible. Might need to zoom in a little bit and then just push that forward so it touches that curve just like that. So there we go. Not bad for a first try. And this maneuver that I'm doing right here where you draw a curve and then fiddle around with the CVs until it's just right, that's the kind of thing you can really burn up some time with. So. I'm going to go ahead and call it just about there. Um, it is slightly addicting, so I might just maybe push this up a little bit. <laughs> just one more hit. OK, there. I think that's about right. And I might need to do that again, but we're going to call it there. And uh, so I'll turn off my points with um, that maneuver. And then we're just going to revolve this, same as we've done all the other times. So. Revolve tool, okay. This time, instead of using the button, let's just type it in. Revolve. Select curves to revolve. That's the one, okay. Grid snap. Draw a little something, and then just go up here and hit full circle, and that's going to be that like that. Cool. Okay. Double click on this to bring us back into four panel mode, and we're moving along. Okay. Good. 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 So just in comparison to my previous build, I think maybe what needs to happen is this piece here is a little bit short. So I might move that up and then um, just I'll have to rerun this in this surface. So um, no problem. That's just kind of how I'm feeling that's going to work out. But so far, uh, this model is coming along. OK, so. Uh, Next thing to do here is save the surfaces you have created. 
onto the surfaces layer. Okay, that'll be it for that. And in our next video, we'll make some adjustments on these curves, rerun a couple of surfaces, and then we'll get into uh, adding some chamfers and getting started to um, do some of the more complex uh, side cuts. We've got more work to do on this thing, okay? I think that's a good place to leave it. Make sure that your file is nice and organized. Um, last thing I was going to do was just take this curve here, save it as a construction curve, and other than that, I think we are good to go. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.